Hi, we have already created separate videos on how to practice in USA and Canada after your BDS in India. But there is confusion that if I complete my DDS in USA, can I practice in Canada and vice versa? To help answer all those questions, we have with us Dr. Simi Dilon. Dr. Simi Dilon completed her BDS from Punjab, then moved on to Canada for better opportunities. She then went to USA and did her foreign trade dentist DDS program in the University of Washington at Seattle. She then moved back to Canada where she's practicing as a dentist. I'm Dr. Satish Kumar. This is Kaizen Dental. Our aim here is to help dentists succeed. Hi, Dr. Simi. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, my first question to you is, you spent a lot of years in Canada. Then still you tried to get into the DDS system in USA. Why was that? So the reason for this is when um, I started my process of uh, getting my license, uh, DDS license in uh, Canada or USA, is at that time there was no challenging exam. So nowadays they have challenging, you can challenge the exam. Um, that time you had to go to a dental school um, in Canada or US. Um, that time the, in Canada, there were only a limited uh, number of seats. Uh, but U.S. had hundreds of seats for international dentists. And um, I had already waited like seven, eight years after I had done my dentistry from India. So I just thought, um, you know, it, I don't have enough time to like write the exams over and over. And also I was um, not in touch with dentistry for almost seven, eight years. So I was not really confident if, you know, I would be able to clear this exam in Canada and get into only limited, you know, there were 10 or 15 uh, seats. So that's why uh, the process was similar. The, the times were similar. You had to write similar exams. So I thought I'll just go, you know, straight with U.S. Um, school. So I wrote the exam, um, which is NBDE part one and part two at that time. Um, and then I actually applied for a school that was really um, close to Canada. It's in Seattle in um, US and it's right on the border of Canada. So it was quite close to where I was living at that time. Um, and the funny thing is uh, in that school, they only had four seats. So, you know, my intention was that I'm going to US because there, there's hundred seats and, you know, like in New York and Boston, there's like hundreds of seats and they only had four seats. Um, and hundreds applied and then I got into that and so I was like okay well I underestimated myself but then it was close to Canada you know um, I had gotten a loan for my studies so I'm like okay I'll just go there so that's how it happened. Understood. So you told about at that point of time you didn't have something called as challenging the exam which you have now. What did you mean by that? Before you listen to the answer to that question please do not forget to hit the like button below because it shows the YouTube algorithm that you want such content so that you can take your career to the next level. And I'm sure you're subscribed to our channel because if you're interested to take your career to the next level, this is a channel you should subscribe to. So challenging exam means the equivalency exam. So at that time, uh, you know, you either just had to go into a university into the advanced um, placement programs. So now you, there is, you know, AFK. So you start with AFK. Um, so these are the equivalency exams and then AFK and then ACJ. So it takes about, um, you know, many of my friends now that I even work with, they have challenged these exams and they've passed these. It does take about two to three years, you know, um, depends like how many times you have to write an exam. Um, and how fast you can write it. And then you have this clinical part of it. So that's what I meant by challenging the exam. Um, so, you know, you start with AFK, that's assessment of fundamental knowledge. And then um, you just, you know, go through the steps. And if you clear all those, then you don't have to go into a dental school. Um, but again, you know, it doesn't mean that, you know, it is quicker way or anything. It does take two to three years. And um, even writing those exams is quite costly. So, you know, it um, going to a dental school is costly as well. 
Um, but uh, you are writing all these exams and then you're studying, you can't work. Um, you know, you have to study like constantly, you can't be working. So it all kind of adds up. Uh, maybe going to a dental school, I would say it's a little bit more expensive than this, but even, you know, yeah, writing all these exams and challenging the exams is um, quite costly as well. Got it. So you told me you got a loan when you shifted to USA to do your DDS. Did you get that loan from Canada or was it from USA? And who can qualify for this loan? So because I was a permanent resident in Canada, so I did get a loan from Canada. In Canada, there is a different, there's different kinds of loans. There's a student loan. So you can get it if you're a citizen of Canada or if you're a permanent resident of Canada. Um, I couldn't apply for a loan in US because in US I was considered an international student. So it was just like coming from India. Um, you know, it was the same um, criteria. But yes, in Canada, you can get student loans. The other kind of loan um, I had was on my house mortgage uh, because my husband had a house here. We had a house. So, you know, um, so we got a loan on that. So I, that pretty much covered all my tuition fee and, um, you know, living there and everything. So, yeah, I got a loan from Canada for that. Great. So are DDS courses, that is for foreign trained dentists of the U.S., applicable and accepted across all Canadian provinces? Yes. Yeah. If you have a DDS from an American college for American university um, in everywhere in Canada, it's accepted. So in Canada, uh, there is uh, four or five countries where they'll accept the DDS from and U.S. is one of them. And I think the other one is Australia, New Zealand. Um, but yes, um, if you do DDS from U.S., you just have to write a license exam in Canada. Um, and that license exam, even the graduates from the Canadian universities, they have to write the same exam after they finish their, um, their DDS. So it is same. Yeah. Understood. So is this also applicable in reverse? If I do my AFK exams and I get into the Canadian DDS system, I complete my DDS program, the two-year completion program from Canada. Can I get a job in USA? Definitely. Yeah. So it is the same process. You do DDS in Canada, then you just have to write the license exams um, in US. They have two different kind of license exams. One is for the Western side and one is for the Eastern side. So it's just wherever province you want to go, whatever state you want to practice in, um, you just have to write the license exam and it is accepted. Okay. So the DDS program is accepted. What about the equivalency program in Canada? If I go about finishing my all my exams, the NDEB process, and I clear the equivalency program in Canada, then can I practice in USA? Yes. So if you clear the equivalency and the challenging exams, if you clear all those, um, then you go and get the uh, license for DDS. Then it's considered that you have that you are a DDS. So yes, you just have to write a license exam in US. So it is accepted there too. Great. So what are the factors which made you decide to go back to Canada and not stay in USA? Well, for me, it was easy. I was from Canada. I was a permanent resident of Canada. My husband lived in Canada. So, you know, I always was going to come back to Canada. So, you know, I never, never had any intention of staying in US. It was just like in my mind, I thought that was um, a quick process. Um, um, you know, rather than trying for Canadian um, universities. So, you know, for me, it was easy. I, I just had to come back to Canada. Understood. But if someone is confused, they are sitting in India right now and are deciding between Canada and USA, what would be your suggestion to them? What are the factors they should consider? I think most of it is personal preference. You know, some people want to they have their relatives or friends in Canada or US so that is one big factor if you have your family wherever you want to go there um, other than that you know being a dentist in US or being a dentist in Canada um, my best friend we did the we did uh, BDS from the same college in India so she is uh, practicing in US I'm practicing in Canada 
there is, you know, other than that, there's not much difference. Um, I would say maybe in U.S. it is because there is so many states and so many dental schools, um, way more as compared to Canada, there is more chances. Um, you know, I wouldn't say it's easier to get into a dental school or to get DDS in U.S. You still have to work really hard, but there is more chances um, to get your DDS in U.S. Um, so that would be, I think, one factor. Um, money wise, both, you know, it's probably about the same amount of money you have to spend for writing the exams and then the school fee and everything is pretty much the same. Uh, but uh, I think, yeah, maybe in U.S. there is you have a little bit more chance of getting into a dental school or getting in your DDS. Understood. Other advice for anyone who is thinking between U.S., Canada or thinking of going abroad in general? Um, well, you know, I get this question a lot. Um, many people on uh, Instagram, they ask me this question. They're like, it is, you know, a long process. Um, it's definitely, you spend a lot of money. Either way, you go to US or Canada, either you challenge the exam or you go to a school, it is a lot of money. Um, and it's a lot of time. And they ask me, is it worth it? You know, like, sh should we do it? It all depends what what you mean by you know is it worth it um if you if you think about dentistry just um as a means of making money you know um i wouldn't say that you know you go for like all this time and all this money um but the thing is um you will make a lot of money but um you have to love your you have to love your profession first you have to be passionate about what you're doing um, you have to, you know, take care of your patients. And if you do everything right and you're doing it for the right reasons, obviously money will follow. Um, you know, obviously if you have patients, there will be money. But um, I would say it is definitely worth it if you're doing it for the right reasons. And if you really love dentistry and if you really like to help patients, if that is your intention, um, you know, everything will fall into place. And I would say for me, it was really, really worth it. And I'm really happy where I am. Um, for the last 10 years, I've been an associate dentist. So that means I've been, I've been working for somebody else um, in their clinic. And uh, now after 10 years, I decided to get my own practice. Um, and both ways, you know, I was really happy being an associate as well. Um, you just have to find the right people that you work with. You have to find the right job that you work work at. And uh, now I'm starting this new journey where I'll, where I'll have my own practice. We'll see how it goes, but I hope it goes good. Um, I'm sure it but will be. yeah, I thank you. So I I think it is worth it. Uh, that's what I would suggest if you if that's what your dream is, if that's what you want. Um, there is no shortcut for it. Uh, you have to you have to work hard for it. You have to have that spirit in you that you can't give up because you know there will be times where you'll think that you know nothing is going according to your and there's hurdles. Um, so you have to go past that. Uh, you have to persevere. Um, you know, and that's the only way. And if you are hardworking, if you are doing it for the right reasons, there's there's no way you it's it is possible. It is, you know, we all have done it. Um, you know, you just have to keep working on it. That's what I would suggest. Understood. So Dr. Simi, I've seen that you're extremely helpful with anyone who comes and asks you for these informations. So if someone wants to contact you, how can they do that? So the best way to contact me is on Instagram. My Instagram is, you know, open. It's not private. So you can contact me over there. Um, and other way to contact me would be through my email address. Great. So we'll put her Instagram handle and her email ID on the description below. You can check that out. We'll be tagging her on her Instagram page as well. Her page is extremely interesting. It's something which you should follow. And she keeps on giving tips and tricks of how to practice in Canada after BDS. Thank you, Dr. Simi, for your time and joining us today.
Thank you so much for having me here and I'm happy to help anytime. In our video, Canada after BDS, we have explained the equivalency process in depth. You can check that video after this video. We'll be putting the details of that in the description below. If you like this video, do not forget to check out our other videos which are shown here and in the description below. They will help boost your career to the next level.